The Reason by Cohen Handler Property Buyers Agents. Proving the hard facts about property investing with Australia's leading buyers agents. Hi, good everyone. It's uh, Phil Tarrant here. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Podcast Network. And we are a network. We have a whole bunch of different shows right across this great podcast channel that we've been running now for three or four years. It's a real privilege for me to be able to do this for my day job every single day, chatting with property investors and some of the best professionals in this industry, bringing it on the airways, live to you all the time. And 2020 is a big year for us here at Smart Property Investment, and we're keeping to continue to deepen our dive into this world of podcasting right across the Smart Property Investment Podcast Network. And I'm happy to announce here right now the launch of a new program within that network for 2020. It's called The Reason. It's in partnership with Cohen Handler, which is a buyer's agency. We've known these guys for many, many years. Their founder and CEO, Simon Cohen, he's in the studio with me. This is the start of our new program called The Reason. How you going, mate? You well? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be back and it's exciting to be launching The Reason this year. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of it. So uh, pumped to be here and, and pumped to see where it sort of takes us. Now, the last time I saw you, Simon, I think it was standing on some grass uh, under a very nice marquee, drinking some very fancy champagne and eating some very nice food at your 10-year anniversary. Yeah. This was we just, just before Christmas. We just celebrated a decade in uh, in business, which was something pretty special and something very exciting. And we got to do it with a lot of people who've been there for the past 10 years, which was really awesome. So we've celebrated that. And it's now time to kick off the next decade and see where it takes us. Nice bookends there, right? You got a decade there in the uh, what did you call it? It's not the noughties. Now we're in the twenties. It was in the tens or somewhere other. It was never really worked well. But now we're in twenty twenty. So the launch of a new program, the reason on the Smart Property Investment Podcast Network. We're going to have a lot of fun doing this. I'm really excited about it. So we've got twelve episodes slated for twenty twenty. So we're going to be getting getting one a month. together one a month. Yep. And there is so much stuff we're going to talk about now. The name is the reason. And we've been talking about this internally, and I know you and your team have been having a lot of discussions around the reason. And I just want to deep dive into the reason for the reason. Why do we call it the reason? Well, it might be a 2 a.m. hairbrain moment (laughs) by uh, our marketing manager. But I think when it really actually came down to it, I think we all know the why. Why is the reason? And, And it's the reason about why we buy, the reason about what we look for, the reason about what makes a good property, the reason about what makes a bad property, the reason about why you need to work with this person or that person. It's really the reason behind all the facets of what you need to get the ultimate outcome. And and I think we're going to cover each of those reasons over the next 12 months and hopefully by you know December 2020 you're going to have learned a lot and you're going to have a lot of reasons answered. It sounds to me that the best sort of property investors or people who buy property effectively are really curious right because they're always hunting the reason is that pretty much the philosophy behind it all? Absolutely and if you're not learning and trying to find out the reason why you should buy here or why you should buy this you're going to be like a guy I met this morning hopefully he's not listening to this but you know he bought a lot of property in southeast Queensland which has now had an influx of properties and he just sold at a loss and so if you're not looking for the reasons you're going to be that guy if you are looking for the reasons you're going to be one of the many 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 people who create creating credible wealth out of property, and it is one of the best ways to create wealth. So hopefully on this show, we'll be able to find you that reason. Well, that's a good thing because uh, I'm always trying to learn and be better informed around investing in property. I'm fortunate or privileged in my role is that I get to speak with people like you all day, right? So I get free advice straight from the horse. I don't know. You're getting invoice yeah, for this, don't <laughs> But the whole idea of the reason, uh, the reason behind the reason is to try and just create more informed property investors and people who are buying property. We're going to get some special guests in over the course of the 12 months. But you know the way in which we want to run this, Simon, we want it to be raw, uncut, a real insider's view on what's going on in property. So real people, real issues. A real conversation. We'll, we'll break them down. Exactly. Real conversation. Now, Cohen Handler, it's a name that's been, it's quite synonymous across the uh, buyer's agent space. You've been in this for quite some time. You're part of the cadre of, of very good businesses who have really given birth to this industry here in Australia, and you continue that onwards march. So some people may know Cohen Handler. They might have heard of the name before. They might have seen you personally speaking at something or had some interaction with you. But I imagine a lot of our listeners might not know anything about Cohen Handler as well. So we're going to have to navigate that as we go through these discussions. But look, this podcast is for everyone involved in 
investing in property. So we don't want to be biased in any particular way. I imagine that we're probably going to have some younger listeners as part of this, so the younger generation. And by that, we're probably talking people in their 30s and stuff, right, who are, might have had a professional Babies. job for a little while now and they've got a bit of a deposit together and they're thinking about investing in property. But Simon, tell me a little bit about Cohen Handler. For those people that don't know who you are and what you do and how you do it and a little bit about the history of the business, what do you guys do? So we're one of the original buyers agents in Australia. We are the largest buyers agency in Australia. And basically, we help people find property, whatever their reason may be, whether it's to live in, whether it's for investment purposes, we help them find, research, and get the ultimate outcome. That is basically us in a nutshell without taking up this whole show. We've been around a long time, and we are incredibly good at it. And we do what we do best, and that is find people houses. And on that basis, and look, you can learn a lot about Simon and his business as we go through, but um, look, you stop the podcast now if you want. Go and check them out. You can see them online, cohenhandler.com.au, and the email you need to know if you've got any questions about what we chat about today or into the future, and these guys are, are more than happy to take these emails or, or give them a call. The number's on the website. It's hello at cohenhandler.com.au. Get in touch with them, see what's going on, and I'm sure they'll tee up a discussion and you can start exploring your journey through property investment with Cohen and handle it. Now, Simon, what gets you out of bed every morning? Like you're obviously passionate about property. You live and breathe it. I spend time with you and you're always doing about 50,000 things at once. There'll be a deal going on somewhere. You'll be dealing with some real estate agent. You'll have some client who you work in a particular deal with. Like how do you fit all this stuff in every day? I think what got me into it was a love for property. I mean, it is something that a lot of people are passionate about and something that I'm certainly very passionate about. But what keeps me in it and what gets me out of bed in the morning is I think that thrill of the deal. I mean, once it's in your blood, it's very hard to get out of, you know, to get out of your blood and being able to close deals every day, being able to find our clients opportunities, being able to deal with different people, you know, to be able to be involved in such a high paced, high energy, you know, high outcome. And by that, I mean, you know, there are great outcomes all day, every day happening. It is a changing landscape every day, but the thing that remains consistent is the excitement. And so, you know, that is ultimately what gets me out of bed. No day's the same, no deals the same, no clients the same. And being able to combine all those three things, you know, gives you a recipe of something that gives you a great reason to go to work every day. Mm. You know, combine that with the people I work with at Cohen Handler, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I've got it lucky, you know. We have a phenomenal team of experts and for one reason or another, we've been an attraction business that has brought us really great clients. And so it's a joy working with them every day. And you mentioned that no one client is the same, but tell me a little bit about your ideal client. Who do you like? Who gets the greatest value working with Cohen Handler? What sort of client are they? I'd say the perfect client is someone who trusts, mm. right? We have done this for a long time. We do it all day, every day. We take pride in what we do and we really go out and we look for phenomenal opportunities for our clients, right? And so a client who trusts our advice over the last decade, they have been the clients that have done the best. And when you look at your philosophy towards investing, every sort of buyer's age has got a particular way of doing it. They see the world a particular way. They target particular properties. How do you approach investing in property for your clients? I don't know if I necessarily agree where there's one approach. I think for us, it comes down to each client and their need and their reason for buying. And, you know, once we ascertain that, it comes down to buying the right property. You know, it comes down to a lot of things, risk, affordability, all those sorts of things. For us, we like to buy as blue chip a property as we can, and we like to be able to add value or buy below replacement cost. Okay. And that there is sort of pretty much the filter you use in terms of identifying opportunities and then capitalizing or taking a negotiation particular way to secure a property. When you look at your client base, how many of them sort of buy through you more than once? Oh, most. Most. I mean, we have clients who've bought 12, 13 times with us. And where we go back to that last point, we are really good at finding opportunities where you can add value, whether that be through equity because it's below replacement cost or whether it be through a renovation and you're creating equity straight away. So our clients are finding that they're able to buy a lot quicker. I've got a client who came to get some advice from me many years ago about putting a DA in on his house. He's a doctor. I ended up buying him a block of five apartments in Bronte off market. That block doubled in value. We then bought him another block with the equity in the first block. He did a light renovation on that. That went up. He's now bought a third block, you know? And I think 
I use that as a case study. That can be a block, that can be a one bedroom apartment. But if you're able to find those opportunities where you can create that value and continue on the buying path, a lot of those clients are repeat clients and it's because we make it so easy for them. I imagine that comes into that trust concept you're talking about. And doctors are used to people trusting them. You go, oh, I've got this problem. You say, can you fix it, doctor? They go, yes. So imagine saying, hey, go and find me some blocks. They must be pretty well, good. Well, you know, this was a long time ago and it wasn't when we had that many clients. And I actually had to say to him, listen, you need to trust me. I've got an opportunity you need to buy. Mm. And, and it came down to that. And from that, you know, from that one coffee has grown a, you know, I call him my little mini Harry Trigger broth, right? <laughs> from that one property has grown a phenomenal portfolio and one he should be very proud of. And so, you know, the hardest thing I think people struggle with is the very first. Once they can get the first property, it's so easy to grow, but you got to buy the right property the first time around. Because if you screw up then, the rest is going to take you a lot longer. Mm. And what's your personal measure or personal philosophy towards whether or not you're doing a good job? How do you sort of finish a day when you go back and you look at a bit of a scorecard of how you performed? What is it that you really get most satisfied with? You know what, for me, it's about when I go to bed at night, if I know I fought the hardest I possibly can for my clients, and that may mean we've walked away from deals because they haven't stacked up. It may mean we've won deals because they're great. That for me is a winning day, you know, Buying a property doesn't mean you've necessarily won because you don't want to be the schmuck who paid the most at an auction, mm. right? So for me, the day is going to bed knowing that I have fought the hardest for my clients, given them every opportunity out there, whether we've won, great. Whether we've lost, it just means it wasn't the one that was meant to be. And tell me about your team. I met a lot of them at your uh, 10-year anniversary. They were a pretty vibrant bunch. They're very passionate. And I don't know how it had anything to do with that champagne that you're serving, but uh, you know, everyone, everyone had a big smile on their face, which is pretty good. Uh, tell me, like, you know, they're, they're a good crew of people. We are unlike a lot of other buyers agencies in the market today where we are fastidious and only having people in our team who have a lot of experience combined with a lot of passion. I think to be a good buyer's agent, you have to really understand your market and you have to really be passionate about it every day. And so when you combine those two things and you get a group of those people under one roof, it really is a recipe for success. And I think that's why our clients get really outstanding results is because they work with people who know a hell of a lot more than them about property. And they are so experienced that they are people you have to trust. They say that the best property investors are those that don't really mix up emotion with the finance or components of buying a property. And imagine the same extent to yourself and your team. You know, they don't want to get too emotionally involved in a deal, right? Because the best deals are sometimes the ones you walk away from. What's your sort of view towards this? How, do you need to have some emotions to be a good property investor? Oh, absolutely. Listen, on Friday night, I got caught up in a deal where someone else came along and made an offer and we needed to move super quick. And I got emotional only in the sense that my clients really wanted it. They needed to exchange. By Monday, they had to settle within a certain amount of time because the wife was quitting her job and then they wouldn't be able to buy for a year. And so when a client really wants something and the stars are aligned with price and their needs and everything, you do get emotional in the sense that you will do anything and everything possible. I mean, I left dinner on Friday and I got in the car and went straight to the office to try and make this happen. So that emotion, absolutely. I think not the emotion of getting your clients to pay more just to get a deal across the line. And there is a fine line between those two things. Mm. There was a property prior to that that we told them to walk away from just because it didn't stack up. And so, yes, you do need to be emotional in the sense that you need to care because I think that's what makes a good buyer's agent, but you can't get emotional in the sense that you're the buyer and you're just going to keep you know, going up in price to get it because that makes a bad buyer's agent. And how do you go about balancing the sort of emotional connectivity and a lot of it's EQ, right? Like understanding people and being able to give them what they need when they mm. need it and being quite responsive to that. You know, balancing the expectation of the clients must be probably one of the most challenging parts of the job. Look, I'm half a buyer's agent, half a psychiatrist. Mm. That's pretty much how I describe my day. Mm. And then even I would say 70% of psychiatrist and 30% of buyer's agent when it's a couple or two people because they're never and on the same Then you're probably age, a relationship right? counsellor, yeah. right? <laughs> then I'm a marriage counsellor. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a divorce, you know, whatever it is, right? 
I think balancing expectations of clients is really important, right? You don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, especially in blue chip areas in, you know, the country's best states, stock is dry. And so it does sometimes take longer. I think it's about our clients understanding that we will fight for them as long as it takes to find them the right property at the right price. And we don't care if it takes longer then it should because at the end of the day, it comes down to finding the right property at the right price. And so, you know, you hit the nail on the head. You mentioned a word earlier called communication. For me, communication is by far the most important thing in business. And if you're communicating with your customers and your clients regularly, you'll never have a problem about expectations. It's if you're not communicating with them that expectations hit a brick wall. I'd like to think that if our audience has been tuning into the Smart Property Investment podcast network for quite some time, they would know what a buyer's agent does. I think most people who are investing in property now got appreciation for it, but not all buyer's agents are created equal. I think people are still confused about a buyer's agent. Now, from what you're saying to me is that you work holistically, 100% on behalf of the actual investor that you're representing or the person looking for an owner occupier property. So they pay you, right? Is that how it works? How do you- We're represented uh, by the buyer. We work for the buyer to get the best possible outcome for the buyer. And we kind of do three things. We go out and we find everything that exists in the marketplace. And the majority of what our firm buys is all for pre-market. So it's stock that clients can't find or get access to themselves. We do all the due diligence around it. So just to touch on it, it's coming up with what a property is worth and why it's worth that. There's a whole lot more. And the third part is we negotiate the lowest price possible for them against the selling side. And for that, we get paid a success fee by the buyer. Okay. And that's how it works. It always worked that way for the last 10 years and moving forward. That's the way you'll structure it. Absolutely. We're success based and we're success remunerated. Yeah, that's good. And that's an important differential between... Some of the other people that may, and I'll use the term masqueraders, buyers agents, where they're actually getting a fee from a developer or someone that's actually selling the property, which is a very, very different proposition. So get educated on the stuff that's important. Now, the reason, I think we've sort of gone through what the reason's about, the reason why we're doing it's called the reason. I get your reason for doing what you're doing. I think it's, you know, the approach you take in terms of providing value to your clients is critical and that's how the best buyers agents operate. And the reason why we're doing this podcast, hopefully that people can make more informed decisions around investing in property. There's a number of ways that we're going to do that. We're going to get some guests in and they're going to be covering all sort of walks of life. Is they're going to be some of your clients. Is that right, Simon? Yeah, I think we'll hopefully over the next 12 months get a whole bunch of different experts in, clients, mortgage brokers, financial advisors, top real estate agents, whatever it may be. I think we will get the best of the best in here because I think, you know, really nailing it, there isn't one ingredient, there's a few, and it's about having that right team around you and getting advice from all of those people. So hopefully we'll be able to sort of bring them into the show and they'll be able to shed some light and share some advice on some tips that they think might really help anyone out there looking to buy. And geographically, Cohen Handler, right across Australia? Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Okay, is where you operate, where you and you service clients. In where we areas, have offices, where correct. Where you have offices as well. Okay, nice. So if you've got more information around that, cohenhandler.com.au, any questions, hello at cohenhandler.com.au. Now, some of the things we're going to chat about over the next 12 or 11 episodes, Simon, we're going to have a little look at you know, expats and retirees, some commercial opportunities, deep dive into what's happening in property. So some of the economic political factors, which are shaping the markets and how you need to be concentrating or focusing your particular property investment, how to expect the unexpected, how to maintain a really good portfolio, buying yourself using a buyer's agent, a bit of a face-off. So comparing some points between this time last year to now, tax and finance to your point, we'll get some brokers in here that can chat about that. Yeah, that's not my specialty, that's for sure. And this goes down to the point of actually understanding Understanding the opportunities of property investor is that use the right expert for the right particular part of the puzzle. Absolutely, because you might realize that one property has a much more phenomenal tax outcome than another, which might make it a lot more attractive to you. You might end up buying a property that gives you no tax benefit and you've screwed up straight away. Absolutely. If you want to get involved in this conversation and uh, let us know the type of topics that you want to talk about, remember hello at cohenhandler.com.au. Now, Simon, here we are at 2020. We're still within the first month. Uh, we're recording this just after Australia Day. Have you had a good Australia Day? I was actually on the television for Australia Day. Of course you were. Yeah, they uh, they got a video of me. Australia's b- most bar- Aussie man. Bar- well, well, <laughs> tell me you weren't in budgie smugglers. No, well, I was actually really disappointed because I was Channel 9, actually. They come past with a camera down on the harbour and started filming. I went, what are you doing? Right, And I was actually 
drinking some champagne. I thought, God, I hope that doesn't get like, I hope they didn't zoom in too tight because I actually wanted to be drinking a can of VB. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a bit disappointed. All your mates were like, who is this guy? I know, don't worry, I got heckled. But here we are. At the start of 2020, it's a new decade. It's the second decade in business for Cohen Handler. How do you feel about the market this year, sort of the next sort of two to three years? Are you bullish about the opportunities for property investors versus how we might have been two, three years ago? Look, I feel excited. I mean, I think, you know, the reality for me is there is never a right or wrong time to buy. You can't pick the top. You can't pick the bottom. If you could, Bill, I'd be drinking champagne on an island in the Maldives right now, Mm. but I'm not right. The reality is I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity and I think you make money when you buy and if you hold it, if you renovate it, whatever you do. So I'm excited about, you know, finding a heap of opportunities for our clients. I'm excited about the people we're going to work with and I think it's going to be a great year and decade ahead. You know, we are in a very strong market, but I personally think interest rates are going to stay low for quite some time and there is a lot of people with cash out there. And so, you know, supply and demand is what's going to set the market, but I'm certainly excited. I'm energized and I think we're going to have a lot of exciting opportunities ahead and hopefully a lot of success stories to be sharing that people can learn from. Just to pick up a point you said there around you make your money when you buy property. This is one of the tenets of effective buying in real estate, right? I'm sure everyone's heard it just the same as, you know, the old adage around property goes doubles in values every eight to 12 years or whatever it is, yeah. right? whether you subscribe to that or not. But this thing around you make your money when you buy property, I, I completely agree with it. Can you just crystallize exactly what that means for those listeners who may not get that? Okay. For me, it is the price you pay when you buy your home. If you buy it well, or if you buy with opportunity, it's always going to go up. If you overpay at the beginning, it's going to take many, many more years longer to catch up to fair market value and then many years longer to actually increase in value. If you can buy it at the right price in the beginning, you're going to be ahead of the game from day one. Did that make sense? It does. And part of the science behind this is actually understanding what fair market value is and then whether or not you're buying under fair market value. And that's very much what you and your team do. How do you know if something is fair market value? Because fair market value is what everyone's and anyone's willing to pay for it. Can I say. tell you, it's a lot of things. I mean, the thing about Cohen Handler is all our buyers are area experts, right? So we live and breathe the areas we're in. We understand how many buyers are out looking for a certain thing, what something will go for at auction. It really comes down to comparable sales versus supply and demand and there is a calculation behind that is that like a secret calculation because someone's telling me the other day that you know coke secret recipes held in some secret vault somewhere with really? armed guards on the door Isn't and it all just sort sugar of stuff? and caffeine that's what i think well you said somebody else said it but they got rid of it it's not a, you know what it's not a secret recipe it, you know it comes down to experience and knowledge in your marketplace mm. i don't know if you can bottle that up and give it to someone you know that's really what it comes down to. It's about knowing and living and breathing your marketplace, knowing what something will go for if it comes on the market, knowing what a comparable property sold for and why. You can have two properties in the same building and you know they could both be two bedroom units and one could sell for 2 million and one could sell for 1 million. If you're just looking at that on paper and you hadn't been into both of them, how do you know, you know why one sold for the other unless you went into them both and realized the one had phenomenal views and the other one looked into a building, you know? So it really is about area expertise and knowledge. So let's get our crystal ball out and talk about uh, our last episode for the year, December 2020, when we're getting together, probably talking about what we're doing for Christmas parties. How do you think the narrative is going to change for where we are today to where we are in 12 months' time in terms of the market or the attitude of buyers towards the market or you know how people or sentiments towards the environment for investing or what the government's doing is going to change this much over 12 months no i think there is still such a demand and cash is so low i think we're going to see a lot of strong results for stuff that goes on the market and whether you're in sydney melbourne or brizzy i think it's going to be the hottest in sydney you know it is the most tightly held it is where a lot of the wealth is i think melbourne is going to be strong not as strong as Sydney. Mm. And Brisbane has seen price growth, especially in Presti suburbs, like crazy, right? So look, I think if you are thinking about buying, you know, everyone was waiting for spring 2019, you know, everything's going to drop in spring. Hardly anything dropped, hardly Mm. anything came on the market. You know, don't wait. If an opportunity comes along, strike. Because at the end of the day, you're much better off in the market than out of the market. Now you're pretty well dialed into to agents across all those key locations across the eastern seaboard and you know, you're one of my go-to guys for getting a feel for 
what's happening at any given time. Chatting with agents since uh, they've come back, and most of them probably still are in Aspen, but uh, skiing. But yeah, those agents that you've spoken to so far, are they sort of walking around with their heads in hand saying, I can't get stock, it's still really hard? Or- yeah, they're finding it very hard. I mean, one agent put a property to the market last week. It had one open home. They were quoting 2.2. It sold after one open home for 2850000 Another agent had a property, which honestly was like you went to Bunnings, put a shed on the block of land, and no parking. They were quoting 1.8. It sold for 2.9 after one. So I think if you don't understand what things are valued at, if you don't have a competitive advantage, you don't have a competitive edge, and that's really what we aim to do with Cohen Handler. We aim to give our client a competitive advantage. Then you're just going to be another one of these poor schmucks who rock up on a Saturday thinking they're quoting 1.8. I got auction. I'll get it for two. And next minute it's 2.9. I think agents, some of them are a little too cocky as to what they think things will go for. I also think that comes back to their vendor's expectations. But um, all comes down to stock. I really like the word schmuck. Can you give me your definition of what a schmuck is? Because it's quite a term of endearment, but it's sort of... A schmuck's just someone who thinks they've got the upper hand without any competitive advantage, you know? (laughs) I'm the schmuck who's going to go to auction and just pay more than anyone else to win it to get it. It's a guiding life, I think, for the reason. It's the basis for the how reason we're is it. how not to be a schmuck. <laughs> how not to be a there schmuck. There we go. We summed it up in twenty-seven <laughs> minutes and forty-eight seconds. I'm going to wind, wind this uh, this podcast up with that, Simon. But I really enjoyed it. I, you know, now uh, now we've had a chance to really chat through the reason together. You know, it makes sense. You know, the reason why we're doing this and the reason why smart investors will be turning to organisations like Cohen Handler to help them secure property because, you know. The reason why people do this is they want to create wealth through property and hopefully at a point in time go and drink champagne somewhere, right? That might be the reason why people want to do it. Absolutely. It's not about drinking champagne. It's about knowing you've nailed it mm. and you're on a path to creating you know, the ultimate outcome that you want out of life. Brilliant. Hello at cohenhandler.com.au. Any questions whatsoever for Simon uh, or myself, but I imagine he's uh, directing the him. He knows a lot more about this stuff than me. Send him in and uh, we'll even answer. We'll do a Q&A session one day as well, Simon. I'd love to. It'll be good fun. Uh, cohenhandler.com.au. Now, social media. I know you a big man on social media. You like uh, connecting that way, Simon. What's the best way to follow you and the business? At Simon Cohen 84 and at Cohen Handler. Okay, best way. Easy. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All and sundry, you there? I think you'll find everything on the gram. Okay, on the gram. It's where it's at. On the gram. Okay. Keep it simple. Nice one. All right, thanks for your time today. Thanks, really appreciate Phil. it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the first episode of The Reason. We'll be back uh, in a month's time, and we're going to get one of our first guests on. So when we know who that is, we'll let you know prior so you can make sure you tune in. We'll be back then. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.